everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is maha in case you forgot and today we are talking about the books i read in july book I read in July was Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This book is about a Nigerian woman who grows up in Nigeria during a military dictatorship. The story takes us through Ifem's life and explores her identity as a Nigerian, as a black person living in America, and as a black woman. Now I enjoyed some parts of this book but I hated a lot of other parts in this book. Specifically, Every time that a femme interacts with the male gender, I really just question what the hell she is doing. She is toxic, she is impulsive, she cheats on others, and she just has a blatant disregard for other people's emotions. When I finished this book, I was repulsed by her love life. And it's not like I'm an expert on love and I know everything there is to know about healthy relationships. But it takes even an absolute moron to understand that a lot of the decisions of Femme made were dumb. And I've seen interviews about this book and a lot of people praise it for being real and being very human, but I don't understand that. I don't- let's just not normalize cheating, let's not normalize having men leave their wife and their children. I just didn't like that idea personally. In addition, this book talks a little bit about mental health, but very sadly. Um, there is a black boy in story who is a child of an immigrant and who attempts a suicide. And the way the characters deal with the suicide is very lacking. I wish that was addressed more and I wish it was addressed better and taken more seriously. Being a child of an immigrant myself and knowing other children of immigrants, there is a lot of stigma around mental health because a lot of times you're just trying to legitimize how you're feeling and trying to explain that you are not acting out or you're not misbehaving, you're not making things up, you're not trying to be ungrateful, and it's a very difficult situation and I don't think the author wrote it that well. Overall, I liked the premise of the book. Uh, I, it's not my favorite book and if I were to rate it, I would give it a 6 out of 10. The next book I read in the month of July was The Grapes of Wrath. This is a classic American novel written by John Steinbeck in 1939, I'm gonna say. In terms of the historical background, this takes place during the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. The main character, Tom Joad, and his family are driven off of their farm because they're not making a profit, and other tenant farmers are also driven off, and all of these families together are looking for work and are migrating westward. This book sparked a very interesting conversation about capitalism and exploitation and became very controversial. In the story, the Jode family finds a handbill that says that there are pickers needed in California. So essentially that there is work in California for them. So the family thinks that everyone will find work and there will be good wages. But that is not true. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. Turns out that these large landowners print out thousands of these handbills and give them and disperse them among a lot of people. And they give their jobs to the people who are the most desperate. The people who will work for ridiculously low wages. The book is about workers unionizing, workers coming together and fighting for fair wages and fighting for their lives. Throughout the book, there are recurring themes of community and many times the people in the story are only able to survive by working with others. I really enjoyed this book, but at times I just found it to be a little dry. And at times it was quite literally dry because they were moving westward and there wasn't that much going on. 
I don't know if it's just my Gen Z brain that just didn't have a lot of stimulus, but I liked most of the book. It was just some parts of the book that I found boring, if that makes sense. I really liked it. Overall, I would give it a 8 out of 10. I would definitely read a John Steinbeck novel again. I recommend. Am I a poet? Yes. Did I know it? Yes. The next book I read in July was The Song of Solomon. This is categorized as African American literature and is written by Toni Morrison. This is the first book I've read by her and I've got to say it was amazing. The main character in this book is a bored and privileged boy. He goes throughout his life not really having a true sense of purpose and he also is very ungrateful for the women that love him. As the story goes on, however, Milkman finds himself as he traces his family history. He finds out who he is and who he is in relation to other people. This book explores the concept of flight, of song, of family, and of death. It has so much symbolism, so much important imagery, and I really enjoyed that. What I particularly enjoyed about this book is that everything fit together in one way or another. All the characters that appeared once would appear again and would make sense and I also just really enjoy when authors circle back to concepts that came up in the beginning. It's just, it's very satisfying to me. Overall, I really enjoyed the book. I think the ending got a little bit convoluted just with all the family history. I just couldn't um, follow all of it and also I think there were some, not I think, I know there are some allusions in this book that I didn't understand, just cultural allusions or biblical allusions, and that's on me. Y'all caught me slacking. I am an English major that's never read the Bible before, and there's some of us like that out there. And I would rate the book an 8 out of 10. It was very good, but also I think there were some parts I was missing, but the book itself was good. So is the rating based on how I read it or how the book was itself? What's the right answer here? I don't know. All right, next we have a TikTok favorite. I have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is a science fiction novel that takes place in an alternate New York City where you can find out about the day that you die through this organization called Deathcast that rings you up and says, hello, today you are going to die. Um, the two characters in the book, Mateo and Rufus, find each other on their last day through an app called Last Friend, and I'll be honest here, my main criticism about this book is that I did not care whatsoever about Mateo and Rufus. There was so much other unnecessary information about different characters and about these characters that when it came time for Mateo and Rufus to die, I was not phased by it. I did not cry, I did not tear up, I was not even sad, and I get sad pretty easily. So I didn't even do any self-reflection about my life or about my death because the book wasn't that introspective. There wasn't a lot of serious concepts to grapple with, or at least I didn't feel very connected to them. It just felt like two boys going on a field trip and having fun. That was the aesthetic of the book to me. Two boys going on a field trip. Also, the dialogue in this book. Please don't get me started on the dialogue in this book. It is, oh my god. It was almost comical at times. A lot of the things that Rufus says in this book are unnatural. The dialogue does not sound like something a teenage boy would say. It sounds like a millennial is writing dialogue for a teenage boy and even though it's true, it shouldn't feel like that. The amount of times Rufus says mad in this book seems unnatural. And believe me, I, I've i gone to college, I have met a lot of college guys that use similar slang as Rufus does, but it does not sound half as cringy. I'm sorry, Adam Silvera, but it was, it was, it was bad. 
I still would give it a 5 out of 10 because even though a lot of it was bad, there were some cute moments. And I love the song American Pie and I love the incorporation of that song in this book. It is now getting dark and I'm starting to look a little scary. So if you think I look scary, don't tell me. I don't want to know. The fifth book I read in July was So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijoma Olu. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. I'm trying my best. This is a nonfiction book that gave a very broad overview of race relationships and kind of talked about the conversations that might occur to any American in everyday life. I would give this book a 7 out of 10 because even though it was claiming to be comprehensive, there was still some stuff that I didn't think was addressed or wasn't addressed well. For one, the author brings up Asian American race relations and does not really go much into that content. And I think if you're not going to talk much about it, then don't talk about it at all. Second, a lot of the book relied on personal experiences of the author herself or her son. And even though those experiences are very informative, I was just hoping that there would be a little bit more statistics and data and just information that allowed me to understand a lot of those same concepts in a more uh, data-driven way. And since I picked it up thinking it was a non-fiction book, I just was expecting a few more numbers. And lastly, there were some ideas I just didn't agree with. I think in one of the first few chapters, she talks about this idea that if you are in a conversation with another person and the other person thinks that something is about race, it most likely is about race. And I don't think that's necessarily true. And a lot of the times I think you should give people the benefit of the doubt because they might just be saying something because they are saying something and not because it is racial prejudice. So I didn't agree with all of the concepts of her book, but I did think it was a good book and I'm glad it has such great ratings on Goodreads and I'm glad so many Americans read this book and many other people outside of America because it is very good for the most part. Okay, the last book I read in the month of July was An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This is a novel about three main characters. We have Roy, Celestial, and Andre and this is a love triangle but it is not as cute and not as cookie cutter as Edward, Bella, and Jacob. Now this book is messy. It is very messy. The most main character of this book I would say is Roy and Roy has a very very tragic plot. The story is about him being wrongfully incarcerated for a uh, allegedly raping a white woman which didn't actually happen and he is sent to jail for many many years and the book explores his relationships with his wife and her own turmoil while he is in prison and when he is out it gets so complicated at the end just the relationships of everybody in the story but it is such a good read it is so worth it i really enjoyed this book if I were to rate it, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. It is so interesting. I really liked this book. I hope you guys read it. It was actually a book that Michelle Obama recommended. And knowing that it's a recommendation from both Michelle Obama and from me is saying something. I hope you guys do read it. It is very good. And that is the last book I read in the month of July. I almost finished The Six of Crows and I almost finished um, Barack Obama's A Promised Land. I just, Barack Obama, in the off chance that you ever come across this video, which the probability of that happening is very slight, but Barack Obama, your book is so long and some parts of it are kind of boring. I'm sorry, I'm a political science major. I shouldn't find a lot of the stuff in this, in this book boring, but 
it is what it is. All right, now that my personal message to Barack Obama is over, um, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you got this far, that's super cool. Um, comment some of the books that you read in July and some of the books that you would recommend. And thanks for stopping by. Goodbye.